salute the divine feminine in her, please help me welcome Reverend Anne Shandor, Assistant Minister, to our podium. Yes, my love. You are welcome. That's okay. She's reserved this week. I know he was going to talk on me now. <laughs> she not even expect it. Good morning, loved ones. Good morning, and all those who are joining us on the World Wide Web. In fact, I have it, practitioners of truth and also those who hunger and thirst for right useness of the mind. And we now have a new spiritual leader. His name is Dr. Edward Villewine. And he sent through a message to all our churches this morning. And I read, this is the epigraph that was taken from Sunan al termidil Florence Covell Sheen and Ernest Holmes. So we start first off. A person said, O messenger of Allah, should I tie my camel and trust in Allah? Or should I leave her untied and trust in Allah? The message of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, tie her and trust in Allah. Mm. Scovel Shin says, I now exercise my fearless faith in three ways, by thinking, speaking, and acting. I am unmoved by appearances, therefore appearances move. And Dr. Holmes, health starts with the knowledge backed by conviction and belief that there's one life, that life is perfect, and that life is our life right now. In it is a complete and whole pattern of perfection. We accept without reservation that it is the spiritual reality of our being. It is the only source, the only cause of every perfect action and function in our body. It alone heals and makes whole. Regardless of what the conditions may be, it knows what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, end of quote. When gathering information about the coronavirus named COVID-19, it is essential to use reliable sources and to be on the alert for incomplete or sensational news. In some countries, the number of reported cases appears to be on the rise and deaths have occurred. However, there continues to be reason to believe that we can respond proactively and affirmatively by first paying attention to the power of our consciousness, and second, by taking actions recommended by health officials, which it turns out are also effective against other flu strains and infections. Hmm. As important as it is to be well informed and in touch with reliable external sources of information, it is equally important to turn attention inward to the source of our being, and let that inner connection guide us through whatever fear or concern is clamoring for our attention. At the heart of our teaching, the science of mind is the concept of oneness. This oneness outpictures as our wholeness and interconnectedness. With this in mind, there is no source of information outside us that may influence us without our agreement. Everything in the world can then be seen as arising from our shared reality, not as something to be conquered, but to be transcended and transformed through our understanding and love. While we tend to our responsibilities in the world by washing our hands and tying up our camels, surely we must also mindfully strengthen our awareness of oneness and trust it to inspire in us the appropriate actions that match our spiritual wholeness. We may well need to keep abreast of national, regional, and local developments concerning COVID-19. And equally important, we can take this opportunity to confidently embrace our teaching of oneness, acknowledging that the fear of the virus is part of our shared experience. We are called to respond with both compassion and spiritual conviction and to move toward together 
with deep recognition of oneness and wholeness. Blessings to all, Reverend Edward Villoine, spiritual leader, Centers for Spiritual Living. He also sends some spiritual suggestions and in the resource part of the letter to say we are to request affirmative prayer, build our spiritual mind treatment online, Listen to our recorded spiritual mind treatment, yes, 978 1167, World Minister of Prayer. And he says yeah, the practical suggestions that the World Health Organization include washing hands and the rest of it. Temporary, what, suspension of hugging and holding hands, all that is in the letter. But he wants us to remember oneness and wholeness. Right, so I've taken care of business. On this day, designated as International Women's Day, we celebrate the women who have influenced our lives as also the divine feminine within us. That which gave birth to, nurtures, incubates, and in the words shared by Emma Curtis Hopkins, for thy thoughts sent me forth, thy mind thinketh my life, thy hands fashioned me, so on this day, yes, we celebrate with our women the strength and resilience that is innate in them as well as all humankind. And the principle behind the divine feminine, the aspects and attributes of our creative nature, that part of us that creates our, the world of affairs, we celebrate that today. And it is evidenced in our behavior patterns as empathy, compassion, tolerance, collaboration, and listening. So this is what we celebrate, all those ladies in purple, including myself. We are also celebrating Mary Sequel of Jamaican birth today, I think it's 100 years, a nurse who played her part in the world by bringing her skill, compassion, and empathy in the nursing of soldiers in one of our past wars. In particular, also this day, Tomorrow actually starts March 9th, sunset to sunset Tuesday, when the Jewish nation celebrates Purim, spelled P-U-R-I-M, but it's pronounced Purim, a religious festival where they ex exchange gifts of food and drink and read the scroll of Esther as they remember their deliverance from death during the reign of ah Ahasuerus, king of Persia. So my thoughts this morning are, are titled, Celebrating the Esther in Us. Here's the background of the story taken from the book of Esther, which is found be um, between Nehemiah and Job in the Bible. Strange enough, in days gone by, there was a question of whether this book should have, should have been included in the Judeo-Christian Bible, as the word God is not mentioned anywhere in any of the chapters. However, the book was clearly about the providence of God and his care for his people. The story of Esther and Mordecai is one of the celebrated successes of the strength of the Jewish people. I use this story to remind us that at the level of the metaphysical interpretation, we have something in common with Queen Esther, especially now. If there was ever a time, no, as a moment to remember who we are in the face of the seeming challenges of our time, we can remember that indeed there is the Esther within each one of us. Synchronicity has also played a large part in my sharing because the CSL listserv that connects all ministers actually focused on the story of Esther as they also focus on the truth of who we are our theme on last Ash Wednesday was fasting and feasting for the Lenten season. And today we are celebrating the Divine Feminine as also the Jewish festival of Purim. So I start my summary of the story of Esther with a quote from Howard Thurman, American philosopher, from his essay, Every Man Must Decide. The quote begins, the ability to know what is the right thing to do in a given circumstance is a sheer gift of God. The element of gift is inherent in the process of decision. Perhaps gift is the wrong word, but it is the, a quality of genius 
or immediate inspiration. And he goes on to say, what is it that I most want to see happen if the conditions were ideal or if my desire were com desires were completely fulfilled, end of quote. So at any time in our life, we have decisions to make. How do we access this quality of genius, which we all have, in order to get to the end point of a decision that supports the fulfillment of our desired good? And now the story. King Ahasuerus of Persia had a banquet in his capital city of Susa. However, when he sent for his queen Vashti, she refused to attend, and his advisors noted that if everyone in the kingdom heard about her non-appearance, wives may feel that they can disobey. <laughs> so he was advised to choose a new queen, which he did. So all the beautiful girls were sent to the palace, and among them was Esther, the adopted daughter of Mordecai, a Jew. Instant success, he chose her as his new queen, and also, interestingly enough, her father Mordecai had heard about a plot to kill the king, which he informed about. The king was grateful for the information, and Mordecai's name joined the palace records. Anyway, King Ahasuerus had also employed a new chief of staff. His name was Haman, proud and vain and wanted everyone to kneel before him. Mordecai refused. His response was, I am a Jew. My people kneel only to God. As a result, Haman made up his mind to kill Mordecai and the Jewish people. He went to the king and advised him that there was a nation in his kingdom that refused to obey the laws of the land and should be destroyed. The king used his royal seal to seal the order which was sent out to all governors in the land to destroy all Jews, Jews on a particular day the 13th day of the 12th month of Adar in the Hebrew calendar, which is celebrated, strange enough, in March, designated as a month for the beginning of spring. Hence, the 9th to the 10th, the celebration of Purim. Anyway, no one knew that Queen Esther was Jewish. All Jews went into mourning and Mordecai sent his message to Queen Esther to go to the king to plead for the lives of the Jewish people. Her first response was she cannot go because the king had not sent for her. The law was you cannot go to the king unless you were sent for. If this is done, going without the king's explicit request meant certain death. Mordecai's response to her was you cannot think of yourself now. The lives of the Jewish people hanging the balance, including your father's household. Here was our actual quote, which is Esther chapter 4, verse 14. It says, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time? as this, end of quote. For such a time as this, Queen Esther was chosen to be queen and to save the Jewish people in Persia at that time. Her response to Mordecai was, gather all the Jewish people present in the province and fast with her and her maidens for three days and then she would go to the king. She said from the Bible quote, I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish, end of quote. You realize the decision that she had to make. If I perish, I perish. But she was still going after prayer. Mm. Well, history states that on the third day, she put on her royal apparel. She went to the king, who was happy to see her. She invited both the king and Haman to dinner. The next day, the very next day, Haman was so flattered to be having dinner with the royal couple. But even in the face of that, he still ordered a special gallows to be built just for Mordecai. 
Anyway, that night, the king could not sleep. He looked through his royal records and found out that Mordecai's past deed had saved his life, and he decided to honor him. Anyway, at dinner the next day, during that beautiful banquet that Queen Esther set up, he told the queen she could have anything she wanted, and she requested the lives of her people. The king found out then that Haman was responsible, so he subsequently lost his life on the same gallows that he built for Mordecai, and Mordecai became the new chief of staff, and Esther saved her people. The Feast of Purim is celebrated for that day, which is truly a part of Jewish history. They actually exchange patties, um, food and drink, and they read the scroll from their, the scroll of Esther during that, that celebration tomorrow. Metaphysically, what can we gather from that story for such a time as this? When we are called upon to make decisions that are going to be life transforming, Inherent in that decision, threaded with the power and spirit of divine intelligence, is a gift, a stroke of genius. So in the face of fear of the unknown, doubt about the efficacy of the law and the providence of Almighty, in such a time like this, what do we do? Let us look at the significance of various aspects of the story. The Jewish people, the metaphysical idea, means um, our spiritual thoughts, beliefs, and aspirations that flow from accessing the in indwelling presence of wisdom, power, and intelligence, accessed by prayer, meditation, any spiritual practice that you have chosen. The Ahasuerus idea taken from the king is the get up and go side of us, the move your feet without checking in syndrome, that was not checking at all with the spiritual side when you have a decision to make. Yes, we will get to the place of complete oneness, but we have to do the necessary work first to get there. So until we are called to say, think, or act moment by moment by checking in with this question, what is spirit's high, highest idea in this moment? for my desired good. What is spirit's highest ideal? Instead of letting the external bombard us with fake news, self-professed naysayers, and even the very condition which we are uncomfortable with, we let guide our thoughts and ideas. Old paradigms that may state, I am accustomed this way, my way or the highway, thinking you know that, that side of us, that in the face of everything, me. Mm. It, and it is easy, you know, to stick to that route rather than be guided into new si insights that move us into limitless living. You're used to it. You're accustomed to it. The Heyman type thinking works with this get up and go syndrome. This is a part of us that when we are moving towards a new decision, the thoughts and ideas that immediately move into our face, you can't do it. This, this stock market, this, you're too old, this, you know, that phase, that's a, mm -mm, not you. Those thoughts are a complete opposite to what we know as truth. What is right and full of integrity against our spiritual ethics, thoughts that can only court trouble, commotion, confusion, and arrogance. The digging deep, not moving ideas. Need I go on? Hmm? The Mordecai idea stands for the spiritual power within every soul that constantly moves towards our redemption in the face of the opposites. That little gut feeling that says, you know better than that. Stick to truth. Our creator is awesome. And with God, all things are possible. We can do it. This Mordecai idea is always victorious on the side of truth. You know, she said to, to him, on, I am not bowing in my religion. The only person we bow to is God, not you. Always victorious in the side of truth, not to outside thinking. We are resolute in turning away from error to establish and stay established in the truth of our principles, one with God and all. We dwell in the Father's kingdom of good. 
And the Esther idea stands for the dissolving power of spiritual love. That happiness and good fortune, that star quality that is within us. Yes, every one of us have that stroke of genius that lies within us, barring none. And also this Esther idea is an antidote to the dict dictatorial will of error and relentless negation. Eth Esther requested that the Jewish people fast for three days. In other words, this principle in us, when activated, we use all the forces that is within us, spiritual and otherwise, to focus on the thoughts of what we truly, really want to experience. Her maidens are really the thoughts, the spiritual thoughts of our community. And every aspect of herself she used and was devoted to feasting on the outcome, which is the saving of our people. So in such a time like this, all of us are called upon to make the decision to fast from what does not serve us individually, collectively as a community and a nation. We do not have to wait to be specially selected to access the gifts of spirit within. As we fast from thoughts, our ideas, behavior, patterns that are not in alignment with our spiritual nature, what we feast on, the natural goodness and compassion, the empathy that is within each one of us, and the going within as a natural habit and expressing unconditional love. This unconditional love is fearless in the face of everything that screams otherwise. When the individual will is threaded with love, wherever that person goes, the goodness of love makes the way clear and straight and life cooperates with us. It dissolves seeming separation. It works in our offices, our household, as we remain focused on the truth of who we are. Our summit meeting of May 15th and 16th is a projection of just that. It is to start or initiate a conversation of love among us, our congregants, our friends, associates, and those who come into contact with us from this neighborhood whose primary interest is personal and community transformation. Friends, Join the conversation taking place now in the organization, culture, community, and conscious raising quadrants. Be part of something that is for such a time as this. It is not the time to be hasty. You notice um, Esther did not make her request known at the first chance she got. She waited until the time was correct. We do have access to the wisdom, intuition, and intelligence of God to guide us and guard us. The significance of the festival, Purim, is just what we are hoping to build in our community, to hold the high watch for a country that works for everyone. Yes, we face with the inconsistencies and there is fear, the what-ifs and the scenarios that we build up like condominiums of doubt and fear, spreading through social media what is not in alignment with good and good governance and love. But we are all on WhatsApp in some way, shape, or form. So we can send through something positive and life-enhancing. Let us exchange gifts of joy, peace, and harmony as we remember the Esther principle which is within us to remain steadfast and sure in the face of race beliefs that preach death and mayhem. Let us move away from all that and feast on what is good, beautiful, and true. Whatsoever things are of good report, let us celebrate the life of God in us as us and take a hold of that spiritual practice of speaking and acting and thinking from unconditional love. Robert Schuller shared a story that I took from some book I read. It's from the state of Iowa. He said, this farmer went to pick up his son at college and they were all at home. And while they were there, a hailstorm started and the family moved as a unit to cover the farmer's prize roses. I can understand that. Anyway, after they did what they had to do, they went to supper. And while they were there, a raging tornado developed. 
they were able to take what they could carry and drive two miles away from the farm. After the storm, they drove slowly home. Curious sightseers started to gather, sensing something terrible had happened. We we're only a half hour before there were nine freshly painted buildings on the farm. Now there were none, all gone. The farmer shouted, it's all gone, 26 years, all gone. Anyway, they had a little ceramic plaque that was in the kitchen, which had the words, keep looking for Jesus. Half of that ceramic plaque remained. He found the keep looking part. <laughs> and the son said in his own words, that was God's message to dad. Keep looking, keep looking. They didn't sell out or quit. Persons thought they were finished, but they did not give up. The father used his faith and guidance to rebuild a completely demolished farm. After that, the prices for farm products rose sharply, and they prospered after five years, paid off the mortgage, in fact, they were the only farm that remained. The other eight farmers had given up. Keep looking, friends. Keep looking to the only power and presence in every moment, triumphant or otherwise. Reverend John Waterhouse, in his article, Finding God in Everything in the December Sense of Man, states, finding God in everything, no matter what, means that we are creating at what is called the level of first cause. Thomas Troward explains it like this. If we regard the, fullment, the fulfillment of our purpose to be contingent upon any circumstances, past, present, or future, we are not making use of first cause. We have descended to the level of secondary causation, which is the region of doubt, fear, limitation, all which we are impressing on the universal subjective mind with the inevitable result that it will build up corresponding external conditions. None of us are immune from descending to the level of secondary causation, but we don't have to stay there, end of quote. So at such a time like this, let the Esther quality lead us back to first cause, finding God in everything, and let the glory of God shine through us as the complete manifestation of our desired good. If Queen Esther had let the race belief of the law stop her, then we would be having a different conversation about the Jewish people. It's the same thing with that farmer in Iowa. If he stayed, if he, if he left, he wouldn't possibly, maybe, we don't know, but he stayed, he used cheaply priced building material from the destruction around him. This is what he used and built up his farm. You know, when everything popped down from everybody, he bought it cheaply and built up his farm and built a successful mortgage-free enterprise after five years. Time everybody run when if it stay. The roses, well, I didn't ask, but I suppose, I hope there is something that, that was left. Anyway, he found his answers within him and around him, and he was successful. So this morning, friends, let us move away from Haman and all the other things, and just let us seek our guidance from within, that one power, that one presence, that one intelligence that unites us all. And I repeat from Eugene Holden, and you can share it with me, I am the love of God in all situations. I am the healer of God in all situations. I am the healing presence of the one. I am the healing presence of the one. I am love. I am love. Namaste.